Hey there, good morning, good evening, good whatever time you're watching us at. Welcome to Pipe Dream Speed Run number three. Big thanks to Phil Wolstenholme for providing this week's speed run inspiration. He writes to us, he says, I'd like to be able to react to new posts from my dev.2 account so I can do things like update JSON for you to those posts and rebuild my website. That is a really cool idea. So what Phil is asking is for the ability to trigger a workflow whenever he posts a new article on dev.2. Dev.2 is a social media platform specifically built for developers. One of the perks of using Dev.2 is when you create a post, it is automatically in Markdown and has the front matter that you'd expect from a static site generator like Jekyll. We're going to publish a post on Dev.2. It's going to trigger a pipe dream workflow, which is going to create a file on GitHub, which will automatically trigger a build of our personal site on Netlify for hosting. First things first, let's start by opening a brand new pipe dream workflow. Now I am cheating a little bit because this is a private component. I will publish it soon though. In my case, I'm just gonna use one of my existing sources and this is my private dev.2 articles. Now you can see that it's pulling my articles from my dev.2 account, which we can build the workflow off of. Let's just pick one of these articles, this one. And here's all the data that dev.2 provides on the article. The most important one, of course, is right here, the markdown. We're going to take this content and we're gonna push it to GitHub. Now that we have our article selected, we can create a GitHub action. You may notice that there is no create file pre-built action here, but that's okay. We can use this, use any GitHub API to customize an API request to GitHub. Don't forget to select your GitHub account. That will automatically populate your access token to the API request. You have to worry about authorization, OAuth handshakes, none of that. It's ready to go. So since we're publishing this to Jekyll, we'll need to actually format the title to include the date. And we can do that pretty easily. We'll just copy the published at timestamp from our dev2 data. And then we're gonna have to format it to remove the time portion. And I like to do it like this, parse ISO and format ISO from this awesome date FNS library date functions and we can say title equals parse iso this will convert this string into a date time object and then we can format it format the iso string or the iso object and we care only about the date so we're going to call it representation into a date this will convert our title or our i should say this is a date and then we can create our title. Title equals the slug along with the date. So start with the date and then append this slug path. This is the title of the article from dev.2. And now we have a great title. Let's go back to our GitHub repository here and we will copy this URL path. And now we have the exact API endpoint we want to post our data to in order to create the file. Uh, the path will be underscore posts. That's where posts live in Jekyll world. And then we will inject our title here. Well, it probably would help to end it with MD, huh? That way it's a markdown file. And then we'll just copy and paste our repo name from GitHub. Actually, this one is better up here. No formatting, no problem. We'll copy and paste it here. And now we have a URL that will create a file at this place. Next, we need to make sure we include the message and the content of the file in Base64. Converting to Base64 sounds kind of intimidating, but it's really not that hard. I'll show you how to do it. First, we need to grab our content, which is this big body markdown path. And grab this, paste it down here and let's turn it into a buffer. So const buffer equals new buffer, and we pass that as uh, our content as an argument. Now we can convert it into a, and we'll just call it content, just like the API asked for. So we'll just say buffer, convert it back to a string, but with base64 encoding. And that's it. Now we have a base64 encoded content string 
we can pass down to our API request here. So content. And then last but not least, we need to include a message like the API said. We'll call it a new blog post from dev.2 just to make it easy. And that's it. Let's hit test. So unfortunately, we've gotten a 404 error message, and I, I think I know why. So by default, Axios uses the get method to send requests as. We need to tell it to instead use the put method as defined in the GitHub documentation. Try this again. All right, we got a test completed. Uh, it's 200ing, so that means that the content was accepted. We can go check out our GitHub really quick here. We should see a brand new file being committed. Look at that, adding a new post from dev.2 includes the slug and it creates this brand new file. Look at that, that's pretty neat. That's a blog post created from dev.2. And then if we go over to our builds, look at that, cool. It's automatically building my Jekyll site, thanks to Netlify, listening to the GitHub push on the, on the main branch. And soon this post will be live on my own personal blog thanks to Pipedream and this awesome workflow. So just to recap, we created a brand new workflow that listens to when you publish articles to dev.2 and it will create brand new blog posts on your own personal blog. It's like a backup service as well as like a new channel for that same blog post on a website you own. Uh, really neat and it took us less than five minutes. So thanks again, Phil, for the recommendation. This was a really neat idea. Thanks for tuning in and, and watching. If you have any more suggestions, please comment below or use our official survey to give us your request for what we want to see built next. Have a great day.